All right, hello again, everybody. Hope we're all doing well. So today is uh, the first day of the portion of the class on abortion. So today will be our pro-life focused day. Uh, and then the next day will be our pro-choice uh, focused day. So we have as a representative reading of this uh, view, we have Don Marcus's Why Abortion is Immoral. Uh, but first, I'd like to uh, contextualize kind of the discussion at large. So let's talk about what are the range of views that one can have on abortion. Um, for example, there might be any number of different views that you can have about abortion that we can put in a, in a helpful sort of spectrum like this. So we can think um, that abortions are permissible at any stage of the pregnancy for any reason whatsoever. Uh, we could have views that say uh, we can't have, or it's impermissible, morally speaking, to have abortions at any stage in the pregnancy for any reason, right? Or we could say that there are some stages of the pregnancy where it's okay to have an abortion for some reasons. And so just depending on, you know, you can build your view here you can say um, abortion is okay so long as it's done before this time and for this reason, but not for this other reason, right? Um, and some candidate reasons for abortion are, are here at the bottom for, for you to look at. So some reasons that we might give for having an abortion. Um, so medical concern for the well-being of the mother, um, potential health hazards for the future of the child, um, uh, rape or incest, humanitarian concerns. These are all candidate reasons for having an abortion. Okay, so typically this debate is framed around um, whether or not a fetus is a human being. Um, Okay, so here's an argument for the wrongfulness of abortion, right? So it's a wrong to intentionally kill innocent human beings. Uh, a fetus is an innocent human being. So it's wrong to kill embryos and fetuses, right? And abortions are intentional killings, and so it's wrong to have an abortion. Okay, so here we have a potential equivocation uh, equivocation means that we're using the same word in two different ways. So think about the bark on, of a tree, the bark of a dog, right? Bark, same, same word, two very different things we're identifying with the word bark. So here we can talk about human being in the sense of a genetic entity that has human DNA, right? So, um, if I scrape off some skin on my hand, right, we could say that this thing has human DNA, right? But we wouldn't say that that thing has any moral status, right? Um, and in another sense, we could talk about human being in the moral sense, right? We, we can mean something with robust personhood, something that we owe things morally speaking. So, so here we don't want to um, run, run into the equivocation here. Um, so it might be wrong to kill human beings to find as moral agents, but um, we have to also mean here human beings have to be defined as moral agents here because we could just say that, well, fetuses are things with human DNA, and that won't get us to the conclusion that performing an abortion is morally wrong. So we always have to be aware of the sense of human being being used in the context of the argument or the discussion. Okay, so we, we can think about um, whether or not the fetus has personhood. So the debate is centered on this question. Okay, if the fetus is a person, well, then it's for sure wrong to have an abortion. If the fetus is not a person, well, then it's for sure okay to have an abortion, right? And so all of these philosophers and all these politicians and all these people are trying to argue, look, the fetus is a person. 
look, the fetus is not a person. And everybody assumes that we can, from those premises, we can just jump to the conclusion that abortion is right or abortion is wrong. Okay, so, so here we have, we, and we have, start out of the gate, we have trouble defining a, or categorizing a fetus as a, as a person, right? Because personhood is usually given to things with a certain level of cognitive functioning um, or a certain criteria of self-awareness which um, young children and fetuses likely lack, right? Um, or the, the disabled likely lack as well. Um, and so we, it, it raises this question, do these people have personhood? What is their moral status if they don't have the correct um, cognitive capacities, right? Um, so, and as we saw in the last lecture, it's it would it's probably good to greatly broaden our conception of who has moral considerability um, or maybe even personhood uh, so here um, people are trying to argue that the fetus does in fact have personhood and given that fact it follows that abortion is wrong or the fetus does not have personhood and abortion is morally permissible, right? Okay, and so we can have um, sort of a spectrum of views here about what the fetal, what the person is, right? Or, or what the fetus is, right? Um, so maybe the fetus is more like a plant. You know, you pull a weed out of your garden, you pull a fetus out, right? Um, is same, same kind of thing happening, right? Um, or we could say that a fetus deserves some consideration, right? Um, but it doesn't have a right to life, right? So maybe if we think that squirrels are owed moral consideration, maybe a fetus is more like a squirrel, you know? Uh, I can't just arbitrarily torture a squirrel, but it might be okay for me to kill a squirrel every now and then. Similar way, maybe the fetus is, is in a similar way, right? Or we could say that the that a fetus is a person with a right to life, right? Uh, and that they, that people with right, with a right to life should not be killed arbitrarily. Um, and so we, we can, we can think about the moral status here in a, in terms of a kind of spectrum. Okay. So here are some legal views of abortion in the United States. Uh, the, the big idea here is that um, Roe v. Wade, we, we had the uh, first 24 weeks, it's, it's permissible to have an abortion. And then after that, it's not permissible. And then um, Casey, 92, pointed to the conclusion that uh, pre-viability is, that's the, the time when it's okay to have an abortion, whereas post-viability, it's no longer permissible to have an abortion because the fetus has a legally recognizable interest and therefore a, a right to life, right? Where we have to restrict that. So this is the context of the discussion at large, right? Um, and it's so centered on whether or not the fetus is a person. Okay, so we've been looking at what are known as pure personhood arguments. Okay, so we're about to look at two articles that cut against the grain, so to speak, of the discussion at large. So, for example, Don Marcus thinks that, he, look, even if the fetus is not a person, it's still wrong to have an abortion, right? Uh, Judith Jarvis Thompson, uh, this is one of the most uh, famous philosophical essays, um, she says that even if the fetus is a person um, with a right to life, we can still have an abortion and it be okay, right? And we'll see next time how she argues for that conclusion, right? Um, so you have two authors that are saying, look, uh, that, that point to the conclusion that the personhood question may not even be the right question. Because even if 
the fetus is not a person. It may still be wrong to have an abortion, according to Marcus. And according to Thompson, um, even if the fetus is a person, it may still be permissible to have an abortion. So we turn now to Marcus uh, and his argument for why abortion is immoral. Um, so the aim of the argument doesn't start with abortion. Rather, he's going to establish why it's wrong, generally speaking, to kill um, other people, right? Um, so why is it wrong to kill people? Think to yourself for a moment. Um, why? Why think that it's wrong to say, kill me? Um, we might say that it's wrong to kill you. And this might be somewhat outcomes related. We can, we can talk about that. Um, is that it takes away um, your future, your valuable future, um, what Marcus calls your future like ours, right? Um, and so here's the idea. Look, my future, your future, all of our futures are full of wonderful and really great experiences and valuable experiences and relationships and activities and developments. All of these things are valuable to us. Um, and all of those things, we're going to enjoy them in the future, right? Tomorrow, the next five minutes, the next 10 years. We're going to enjoy all sorts of pleasurable activities. Okay. Um, so a fetus also has a future like ours, right? Okay, so we can't kill a person. Well, why? Well, because it takes away their valuable future. Well, we can't kill a human being because it takes away their, I, I need to be clear there, right? Uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, person, like a, a moral person, person with uh, a, a human being with moral status of personhood. Uh, it's wrong to kill human beings because they have valuable futures, generally speaking, right? Um, and so it's also wrong to kill fetuses, not because they have personhood, no, because they're going to have a future like ours. Uh, they're gonna have a valuable future. So um, here's the argument for why killing is wrong, right? So killing ends biological life. It's just standard definition of killing. Okay, when you kill something, you take away its future. It doesn't get to have any more experiences, right? So premise three here is very key. Um, a human being's future is full of activities, projects, and enjoyments that are valuable to that human being, right? Okay, um, premise four, those activities, that future is valuable um, to that person. So killing takes away all of that value. Okay, so generally speaking, it is wrong to take away that future value without a good reason, right? So in conclusion, in the absence of good overriding reasons, it's generally wrong to kill someone. That's the idea here. So there are some strengths of this argument. Um, so it's, we're not talking about, like this argument is not does or doesn't have to be limited to human beings, right? So imagine that we were to find a Klingon, right? Or, or a, um, a Vulcan, right? Like Spock. Those are rational creatures. Uh, those beings have valuable lives um, uh, in that have similar futures like human beings futures right so that means that it's wrong to kill them right so we're not we're not limited in any way to just human beings here okay this argument also allows for euthanasia 
uh, which is uh, um, assisted suicide, right? And regardless of whether or not you agree or disagree with euthanasia, this argument can say, look, euthanasia can still be morally permissible um, because in some cases, human beings will not have a valuable future, right? So it could be that some patients that don't have very much time to live will experience lots of pain for the rest of their very short life. Um, perhaps we could argue that that kind of future is not valuable, right? Not valuable to them. Um, and so if, a, if we have a candidate for a future that's not valuable, then we can, we could kill that person. That's the idea, right? Cause it's only wrong to kill somebody if they have a valuable future. Um, okay. It explains why infanticide is wrong. It's wrong to just kill babies. Right. Um, and Marcus notes that this argument is compatible with the use of contraceptives. Um, in part because there's no human being to take away a future from, right? It's only wrong if you take away the future from a person, but contraception limits the creation of a human person. So if there's no human person there, there's no future to take away from. That's the idea. Okay, so we have an argument that is compatible with popular views about many different um, um, ethical or, or, or topics in bioethics, right? Um, and so we, what we can do is we can take this argument and apply it to abortion, right? So in a similar way, a fetus has a flow in, in most circumstances. Um, uh, it's wrong to take away flows to an entity that's going to have a valuable future. Um, and so it must be wrong to kill a fetus. Abortion is understood as the killing of a fetus. And so abortion is, generally speaking, wrong in the absence of an overriding reason, right? So we might ask, well, what are some overriding reasons for killing a human being? Well, the, just think of an adult human being. For the moment, well, we might say that um, self-defense cases, right? It, it might be okay in a self-defense case to kill a human being if it's kill a human being or be killed, right? Suppose that's the only; those are the only two op, uh, options or outcomes that we can uh, conceive of. Um, it may be permissible to kill another human being that would be an overriding reason. In a similar way, uh, maybe if the mother's life is at stake, it might be okay to have an abortion. Um, uh, we, can, we can argue about whether or not that is itself a candidate for an overriding reason. Um, but, so we, what we have here is we have an argument that generally speaking, um, abortion is morally wrong. Uh, and it's also open to overriding reasons that might make abortion morally permissible. Things like the mother's life, perhaps things like cases of rape or incest. Um, maybe those are overriding reasons. Um, but the biggest point here is that this argument is not contingent on whether the fetus has personhood. In fact, it's consistent with the denial that the fetus has personhood. 